we're going to demonstrate how to bake a good bread. Now, bread is the staff of life, and uh, you know, people make such a fuss about bread, and some people want to bake every ingredient that is necessary for survival into a bread. A bread doesn't have to contain everything that you need. A bread should become part of a balanced lifestyle. Now, the type of bread that we buy in the stores today is mostly unfit for human consumption. They have so many additives and what they call bread improvers, which might improve the pockets of those who bake the bread, but certainly do nothing for your health. Because these bread improvers make the bread exceedingly light so that you can actually take one loaf and compress it into one sandwich, if you're lucky. So a good bread should provide not only good nutrition, but a good bread should make everything flow in your body. It should help you with the motility in your intestine. Now if you take any flour, here I have some rye flour, and here is a packet of uh, Eureka Mills rye flour, non-GM. And this is stone ground flour. And here I have some brown bread flour. And what is the difference between a stone ground flour and a normal flour? Now that the technology for using stones has virtually disappeared in the world and the reason for that is today people are crowded into cities and you have to supply vast, vast quantities of flour to create all the breads that people consume in the cities and so everything has to be very fast and so they use roller mills and roller mills have rollers that are set at different heights from each other and as they put the grain in, the first rollers crack off the bran and the bran comes down in one big pile and is whisked away. And then the flour, the white portion of the meal, comes off the endosperm. That is where most of the carbohydrate is. And then you have the germ in which there are the oils and everything that is necessary for the growth of the new plant. And because there's a lot of oil of it, it gets stuck on the rollers and then they have scrapers that scrape it off the rollers and in the end you have three piles. You have your bran, you have your flour and then you have your wheat germ, which is sticky. And uh, that's rather good for the industry because they now have three piles to deal with. So the one pile they sell to the cosmetic industry the other pile they give you to eat and the other pile they also sell to the cosmetic industry or they make cookies and things out of the bran but there's hardly any nutrition in it. What the flour really should consist of is all of those components well mixed in and that's what a stone ground flour is because the stones grind it all together and everything that was originally there is still there. So now, what does it consist of? The bran is insoluble fiber and that helps with the motility in your gut. And the endosperm is the energy and the food that you require. But the bran mixed in with this adds fiber which holds on to the glucose so that you don't get a glucose surge. So only a whole ground flour will be able to give you all the nutrients in the balanced form that we need it. Today people complain about so many problems like gluten intolerance and all of these issues, but these intolerances come more from our lifestyle than from an actual allergy. If you used whole ground flour, such as these flowers, then you wouldn't have that problem. Now in the industry, People want white bread and flour is not white, it's sort of greyish. And so you need to change that. So they bleach the flour with bleaching agents which add more toxins to the flour. And then they add preservatives and improvers which totally violate the laws of nature. 
So this particular one here, it says no additives, no preservatives, no bleaching, no nothing. What's in there is what was in the grain in the first place. So now let's demonstrate a very simple bread. And here's a rule of thumb. The simpler the bread, the better it bakes, the better it looks, and the lighter it is. The more things you add in, the more complicated it becomes, the more dense it becomes. And in the end, you can bake a solid brick, which is good for building houses, but not necessarily good for human consumption. So now seeing that we are dealing with an international audience, we will use various measures and one that's pretty universal is a cup, a cup measure. Now for a simple bread that will make two loaves, you need in kilograms one kilogram of flour. That's about 2.2 pounds of flour. That'll make two loaves. But if you do not have a scale, then you can use a cup and it'll be about seven cups of flour. So I'm going to take just one flour to make this first bread, namely whole ground brown bread flour, which contains everything that the others had. And we're just going to take a cup and I washed my hands beautifully beforehand. Otherwise I get in trouble with uh, my better half. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's about one kilogram of flour. Now if you're fussy like me, then you would like to use uh, the wet yeast. But to make matters simple, you can also use just ordinary dry yeast. You need one packet, which is enough for two loaves of bread. And the instant dried yeast you can add straight to the bread. Now if you're using the real stuff, the wet one, then you mix it, you put it in a little bowl, you add a little bit of flour and you add a little bit of something sweet like honey or even sugar and you let it first bubble and then when you see that it's really nice and active, well then you use that. But this will work just fine. So one packet of yeast and then we need some salt. I'm using sea salt, you can use Himalayan salt. Don't use salt that is not all the elements. So we use sea salt or Himalayan salt. One tablespoon will be just fine. It sounds like a lot, but remember that this is going to make a lot more than what meets the eye. And then we'll mix the flour and the yeast. And then you need 900 milliliters of water and that's approximately hmm, just under four cups, three and a half cups. And it needs to be lukewarm water, which we've already warmed up here. just see whether this is correct. Yep, that's 900. And that's about three and a half cups of water. Now, in order to make this yeast happy, the flour itself can make the yeast happy, but to make it even happier, you can add something sweet. It can be anything. It can be a teaspoon of sugar. It can be a teaspoon of honey. And if you want a little bit of color, if you're making a brown bread, then a good idea is to take some crude blackstrap 
molasses. And what I will do is I'll just take one tablespoon of that and I'll mix it with the water. and make sure it's well mixed. There we go. Now, what do we have in here? All we have in here is the flour and a little bit of salt and the yeast. Now, if you want to add something more, some amigas, then you can add some ground linseed, which is an excellent idea to add some linseed, but it's not necessary. If you don't have any, it doesn't matter. It won't make any difference. But the ground linseed will give you more of the fibers to help you with your digestive processes, and it will also give you the omegas that you require, so it's an excellent additive. And you can add about two or three tablespoons of that and that should make it just a little bit more interesting. And then if you have a machine you can mix this in a machine but we want to do it the old-fashioned way which is far more fun and it takes some elbow grease so ladies train your husbands to do this and if they don't want to do it properly train them again. Now I'm not going to put in all the water because uh, I want to make sure that the texture is right because not all flowers are exactly the same. Some absorb more and some absorb less and so it depends on your flower. In this case it's pretty absorbent and so I think we actually will need some more. You can add more, and I'll show you the texture in a moment. I'm actually going to add about a liter of water, so I'm going to take some more water. So instead of 900, we added about a liter, so that's about four cups of water. And this actually looks quite fine now. Now, the best thing to do is to use your hand, and this is the most important thing about baking bread. If you were to put this in a pan, the bread would uh, rise a little bit, but there would be nothing to keep the gases that are produced by the yeast and the mixture of the of the sweet substance that you've added and what you would bake, if you bake this, you would bake a perfect brick which you would need a hacksaw in order to make a slice. So what you need to do is to get, to get this into a sort of a chewing gum consistency and for that your hand is the very best thing. Now you can do it in a circular motion with a punching motion and you can see it just breaks apart this is useless. It has to become like glue. And that you do by developing the gluten and that means elbow grease. So this is what you do. You punch it and you punch it and you punch it and you take all your frustration out upon it and you tell it what it was supposed to do and you have fun in the process. And it's good exercise. This is the most important bit in any bread. Now, as we continue and add in the sides, 
you will see a change taking place. You can see it's getting gooier, but it's not nearly gooey enough. If I take a piece and I lift it out and it comes out like that, it's not right. So you keep on mixing, you keep on mixing. This is what a machine will do for you. Why should a machine be so lucky to get all the exercise if you can get it? So it's a circular motion and a punch, and a circular and a punch, circular and a punch. And now you can see it changing. You can see it's getting more and more gooey. And you can do this for about four minutes. If you feel energetic, five minutes. If you're really angry, six minutes. Now I'll show you a difference. If I now take a handful and I lift it up, I lift up the bowl. I couldn't do that before, so this is now like chewing gum. And that's what you want. Because now if the yeast starts working and makes bubbles, it can't go anywhere. So it makes little bubbles all over in the yeast, working, and it rises and the air cannot escape because it's like chewing gum, it's like blowing little bubbles. And that's how you bake a bread that's not a brick. So if you skip this portion, your bread is a disaster. Now I can overdo it. So one doesn't want to do it too much, but certainly it must have this consistency. Now watch this. That's what it must look like. And it must make sort of these chewing gummy, bubble gummy effects. Good. Now I can clean up the sides. And if it's brown bread flour, it washes off very easily under the tap. If it's a more dense flour, well, then it takes a little bit more time to get it all off. And now it must just do its thing. So that's what it looks like, and we cover it up, and we leave it to rise at least double this size, and then we'll continue with the process. Well, I think our brown bread has risen. It's now roughly double the size that it was. So now we can punch it down again, and then we can put it in a greased pan. You can use spray and cook, which is spray, which is a lecithin spray. That is fine. Or you could use a little bit of olive oil and just smear the pans. And uh, in order to not have it stick to your hand, I'm just going to use some lukewarm water and put my hand in it. And 
punch it down. It's very nice and fluffy now, can you see? Nice and fluffy. That's what it must look like. And just roll it gently down. And if you keep your hand wet, then it doesn't stick to your hand. Gently punch it down. No heavy kneading necessary now. Just a nice smooth dough. And you can see it's nice and gooey. Like chewing gum. And now we can put it in the pans. We'll see how many loaves we can make with this. I'll just pinch it in half. And make a nice little dome in the middle, like that. Pop it in. There we go. So it made two loaves, and these must rise again until they are nice and high. And if you want to, you could put some seeds on it, and you can be fancy. You can put some poppy seeds on there, and some sunflower seeds, etc. But we're just going to make a plain um, brown bread. So this is very simple. All that's in there is brown bread flour. It doesn't have any other flours or anything. It has a little bit of linseed, ground linseed, to give you some omegas and a few more interesting components to help your digestive system. And very simple, very easy to make. But the trick is in the kneading and in the waiting. If this has risen nicely and it's about double the size, then we'll gently put it in the oven. And the oven must be quite hot because when the oven is hot, the bread tends to keep its shape. You don't want the bread to collapse. If your bread does collapse, your ratio to water and flour is probably wrong. You probably have too soft a mixture. But if you did it as we said, it should be nice and high in the middle. And you pop it in at 220 degrees centigrade. That's about 420 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very hot. And then after about 5 or 10 minutes, you lower the temperature to 200 degrees centigrade, which is about 400 degrees um, Fahrenheit. And then you bake it for about 50 minutes if the loaf is about this size. So we'll cover these up and put them in a nice warm place to allow them to rise. Well, our bread has risen beautifully. You can see this one has climbed well out over the top and it was half in the pan. This one doesn't look quite so high, but it had less dough, so it'll still rise a little bit in the oven and this should be fine. So we are now going to pop them into a nice hot oven at 225 degrees for the first few minutes. And don't bump it so that it doesn't fall flat. Everything is very gently. And then in about 5-10 minutes, we'll bring the temperature down to 200 degrees and we'll keep it at that temperature 
until the full 50 minutes and then we will take it out and look. Well, our bread is now ready to come out of the oven. Let's have a look what happened to it. Excellent. Now when you look at this little bread here, you can see that it's nice and round, which means that uh, the ratio of the mixture, the water and the flour is perfect. Now if your bread is not round like this and it's making a dent at the top, there are a number of possibilities. Number one, it could be that uh, you put it in the oven and you banged the door and then it dropped or somebody put a heavy draft on it, that could make a bread fall. But the most likely reason is that you have too much water in your mixture. Because if the water mixture is not right, then it will make a dent and the bread will also be soggy if there's too much water. That's why rather make sure that you don't exceed the amount of water and you get used to it after a while. And it must sound nice and hollow. Listen to that. I will let it sweat in the pan a little bit. A couple of minutes, three or four, and then we'll take them out of the pan. Well, our bread has been sweating for a couple of minutes. I just want to make sure that it's nice and loose. That looks nice. This one. Now it should just pop out if everything's going well. Perfect. And this one. Now let me show you this bread. It's perfectly round, it's nicely baked. And now it needs to cool down and it needs to be in a place where it can actually dry out the, the outside. So we'll just cover it with a cloth and we'll leave it until it's cool and then it should be perfect. Thank you. Well, now that the bread has cooled down, the proof of the pudding is in the texture. So I'm going to cut a slice and show you what it should look like and hopefully will look like. Now, the first thing I would like to show is the texture. You can see all these little bubbles in here, which means that the bread has risen properly and it's light and it will be a sweet loaf. And that's what loaves should be like. They should be light and they should have a natural sweetness. Now, when you buy bread in the stores, when you bend it, they break uh, because they are brittle, because the gluten hasn't been developed and all the factors that need to be in there are not present. Now if we look at the texture of this one, you can see how pliable it is. It doesn't break. You can smear it. This is, even if I say so myself, perfect. And if you have bread like this on a regular basis, it will keep your gut regular, you will stay healthy and you will feel a different person. There's a lot of religion in a good bread.